All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Bunker Hill campus of Harbor Assembly. We're excited to have everybody. A couple announcements that we got going on here is um, Friday the 21st at 6 p.m. is Pray the Oregon Coast here at this campus. Um, so you can come and sing and pray with uh, uh, our body here. Uh, we have a, a prayer service tonight also at 6 p.m. Uh, here at the uh, at the harbor, um, and then Wednesday night at Lincoln at six thirty is um, uh, Bible study and prayer as well. We also have trunk or treat is coming up at the Lincoln Street location on the thirty first, which is a Monday this year. So um, and that will start at six as well. And uh, I, told, I told Matt we had to split it up because I couldn't do three sixes in a row. So we're going to do offering right now. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we get to give back to you a portion of what you've given to us and giving our first fruits to you, and knowing and trusting you as our sole provider, Lord. Pray that everyone will, will hold that deep in their hearts that you are their provider, no matter what financial circumstance or any other circumstance in life that arises. You are the leader, the supreme provider, and the supreme God. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing, 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 and make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. One, two, one, two, three, four. Sing, 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 and make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. What's not to love about you? Heaven and earth adore you. King and kingdoms bow down. Son of God, you are the one. You are the one. We're living for Sing, sing, sing And make music with the heavens We will sing, sing, sing Grateful that you hear us When we shout your praise Lift I the name of Jesus You are the love you are the love that frees us. You are the light that leads us. Like a fire burning, 
Son of God, you are the one. You are the one. I'm living for. Sing, sing, sing. And make music with the heavens when we sing, sing, sing. We're grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift I the name of Jesus. Sing, 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 and make music with the heaven. We will sing, sing, sing. We're grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift I the name. What's not to love? What's not to love about you? Heaven and earth adore you. King and kingdoms brought down. Lord of God, you are the one. You are the one we're living for. Sing, sing, sing. And make music with the heavens. We will sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Deep die the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're living for today because one day we're going to fly away. Sunlight. When this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away. I fly away, oh glory. I fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. Shadows of this life that grown, I fly away like a bird from prison bars have flown. I will fly away, oh glory God, I'll fly away, oh glory. I fly away when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I And in order to do this, we have to lay down our crowns and submit to God as our provider, as our leader, and as the sovereign grace. We fall down, we lay your crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 we cry holy 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 is the land fall down we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus the greatness of your mercy and love at the feet of Jesus we cry holy 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 Cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy in the land. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. 
is the Forgiven because you were forsaken, and I'm accepted. You were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how. How can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, that you, my joy, to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted he was condemned and I'm alive and well because his spirit lives within me and because he died and rose again he rose again amazing love how can it be that you my king would die for me amazing love I know it's true it's my joy to honor you in all I do I honor you You are my King. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. You are my King. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you. Because that time that we get to fly away, and when you close your eyes, God is here in, in us. It's not going to be like, oh, we get to go in the presence of God. We are in the presence of God because the Bible tells us that he dwells within us. So all you have to do is close your eyes and just focus, and you can see God and praise him and tell him how great is our God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in life. Darkness tries to hide, 
and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great is our god and age to age he stands The beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God had three in one. The Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great! take this, I mean, I think God just wants us to just take this time, because there's a lot of people with a lot of things going on, where, where it seems that everything seems to be happening all at once, and it's coming at you, and God just wants you to just put that to the side, to give it to Him right now, to put it to the side, and just focus on Him, and, and He's letting you know right now that He's already on it, that He is working on it. No matter how big it seems to be, we must understand that He is bigger, that He is greater, whatever it is. Sometimes we see things, we make things bigger in our heads, but, but, but that's not the truth. Sometimes things feel a certain way, and you feel what you feel. That's okay. But you need to know that God is greater. You need to know, no matter how you feel at this moment, that God has it in His hands that he's taking care of it right now. Hallelujah. 
That with him, nothing is impossible. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too great for our God. The creator, sustainer of the universe. Hallelujah. So let's just give it to him right now. And let's sing that verse again. And just tell him that we know how great he is. That whatever great things that we may be seeing or going through right now, he is greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Hallelujah. Sing with me. How great is our God. And I will see how great. How great is our God. He's our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all the earth will see how great is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we worship you today. We worship you today because you are worthy of all the glory, of all the honor, and all the praise, Lord God. If we, uh, we are sorry if we have put ourselves above or anything above you, yes, Lord. Lord God. Because you are above all. The name above all names, greater than anything that we can even imagine. And we worship you today. We love you, Lord. We honor you today, Lord. Because you are worthy of all the glory. Hallelujah. Lord God, remind us, sometimes we just need to just stop when, uh, from our busy things, even in ministry, uh, even when
I share my faith. The Bible offers us news, not just advice. And that's a big distinction. When we ask someone for advice, we're left with the real work. We have to decide what to do and how to do it. Advice is all about us and it emphasizes the work we have to do. News is something altogether different. When we receive news, something profound has already occurred. It isn't dependent on us. It's already happened. We're left with the decision of response, but news comes to us as a changed reality. Things are no longer the same. When the Bible speaks of the gospel, it is using the language of news. Good news announced to all who will listen. It is a proclamation of a new reality. The gospel is not just advice about how you should live. It is first and foremost the news of what God has already done and done for you. The Apostle Paul said that this news was the power of God for saving the world. Paul wrote to the Roman Christians, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. When we have good news, we can't help sharing it. We text friends, we call family members, we post it online. Sometimes we even get so excited we can't help but tell strangers at the store. Paul said the same thing. How can we be ashamed of something so good? Those first Christians who took the good news of Jesus to the world didn't do it because they had to. They didn't sheepishly peddle Christian advice. No, they proclaimed it. They preached it. They sang about it and witnessed to it by the power of the Holy Spirit. They sold possessions. They made costly sacrifices. They gave up their lives. But they did it with joy. They did it with rejoicing. They had good news and they knew it. A lot of people feel intimidated about sharing the faith. I understand that. We worry about offending, we worry about being rejected, we worry about looking silly. It's easy to get discouraged and feel like you aren't living up to your quota. Look, I'm not here to put you on a guilt trip. I'm just here to remind you that you have something good. You have news. The world has changed by God's grace and you know about it. Maybe the best thing we all could do is realize how good this news really is. For when it is good news to us, we can't help sharing it with others. I share my faith.
Hallelujah. Now, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. His spirit was provoked. You know what that was? That was an unction from the Holy One convicting his heart. He said, okay, something, they got a problem here. We got to do something. We got to let them know. We got to let them know. And I like how they, uh, how the video talks about it. If you have good news, what do you do with it usually? If you have good news, you usually go around and tell everybody, don't you? You just had a newborn baby. You go and tell everybody about that new, that new life. You say, yes, God gave me a new child or gave me a new grandchild or, 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 or no in, a, a, a new son-in-law or daughter-in-law. Praise God. And you go and you tell everybody, don't you? What greater news is this than, than there is than this? We need to be telling everybody the good news. Amen? This is what Paul wanted to do. You remember, he started right away. As soon as he was able to get loose, he, as soon as he got fed and got healed and all that, he was out there preaching the gospel. He was telling people the good news. Thank you, Jesus. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Every day with everyone, every opportunity. He got some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, we, and we got a lot of those today, don't we? A lot of philosophers out there that, that, and a lot of philosophies out there coming in our direction, don't we? And sometimes we look at that, and sometimes we're like, oh, okay, how am I going to convince this guy? How am I going to convince this guy? This guy is just like, you know, he's just set in his ways. But as we were talking about in worship, who's bigger? Who's greater? Who has the power? He can overcome any obstacle. He can break through any wall, any philosophy that man tries to give us. What does this babbler wish to say? That's what they're saying. That's how they see us today. Others said he seems to be a preacher of some foreign divinities because he was preaching this Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to uh, Areopolis saying, may we know that this new teaching, may we know this new teaching is that you are presenting. For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. What do we call that? Opportunity. They were curious. They heard some strange things, didn't they? We heard these things. Sometimes all you got to do out there, last time we, had, we, had a, we were evangelizing on the street, you just got to throw a few things in there to draw their attention. To draw their curiosity. It's like, huh? What are they talking about? Let me, let me hear a little bit more of this. Even if their intentions are not good, it gives you an opportunity to speak. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. They just walked around talking about stuff. <laughs> New stuff. And so this was new to them. So this piqued their curiosity. So we want to hear this new, strange, new thing that you're talking about. Be willing to share your faith. You see, this was, uh, when we go out there, I mean, the main thing that we need to do is we need to, to nourish our relationship each day through devotion to our word, through, through prayer, through all that. And be prepared each day looking for opportunities. We need to look for because they will present themselves. You know how I many times I say, oh, Lord, forgive me. I, I should have taken that opportunity. How many times I've missed them because I was too busy on something else or doing my own thing or thinking about my own thing or wanting to do my own thing. And so, I wasn't looking for the opportunity to preach the gospel. 
You see, so many people, they, there are some people, and I've heard it so many times, well, I don't need to talk about it. I just live it. People can see me. They can see it through me uh, in the way that I live my life. Like I guess sometimes I say, they'll look at you and just say, hey, that's a good person, and they seem to be doing good for themselves. But you see, that's an opportunity because then they're probably thinking, why? They're thinking, why is that person so happy? Look at they're going through this stuff. They just lost a loved one, or they just, or they just lost everything. Why are they smiling? Why, why are they acting so strong and confident in the midst of their, of their failures or in the midst of their trials? Why are they so happy about that? It makes me sick. <laughs> Whatever the thing is, it, 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 it's an opportunity. People see that and says, why? They're thinking to themselves. They won't always ask you. But you should know that that question is probably in their minds. Like, why is this person so happy? You know, I mean, all this bad stuff happening to them. Or, or and, and the thing is, 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 it's an opportunity. When you should see it always as an opportunity. This is Why? Because I have confidence, because I have purpose in my life. You know what everyone in life is truly looking for, and we don't really know it. That's what I pray for my children, the ones that don't walk with the Lord. I said, Lord, reveal what that longing in their heart is to them. Because it's already there. It's already there. They just don't know it. Unbelievers just look for it to be fulfilled in everything but God. Whether it be career, goals, dreams, relationships, money. Power. But what it really is, is a longing to be reunited with our Heavenly Father, to be reunited with our, our spirit groans within us. It longing for the adoption as, as children of God, even before we believe. They just don't know it. But these are opportunities. Be willing to share. This is what Paul says about it. Romans 10, 14. How then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him who they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. How beautiful are the feet. Not only that you have received it, but they can too. There's good news. It's good news for me, but this is also, I, it's, I got good news for you. We need to preach it. Not just live it, but preach it. We need it to come out of our mouths as well as out of our lives. Every aspect of our life. When we are outreach, that's what our outreach is about. We try to do both. We, we, we don't just throw them a sack lunch. And then say, there you go. No, we say, this comes to you care of Jesus Christ. This is the love of Jesus that has given you this lunch right now. That's why we do this. We want them to see the love of Christ in both word and action. Amen? And he talks about in Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to God, <coughs> to your Father who is in heaven. So you need to do both. And they will glorify God by them seeing you. Because if you just do one, or the, if, you do, if you just do the one and you live it and you don't speak it, then they don't know why you're living it. And if you just speak it and don't live it, then you're a hypocrite. You got to do both. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen? <laughs> Come on, let's see a smile about it. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's move on to Acts. Uh, verse 22. Paul addresses the Areopagus. Uh, the Areopagus. Paul standing in the midst of of the Areopagus said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. 
For as I passed along and observed the objects of, of your worship, I found also an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this proclaim to you. As unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. I love that line. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined a lot of periods and the boundaries and their dwelling place that they should seek God. That sums it up there, so they should seek God. That's what it all comes to. That's what it comes down to, so that we will seek Him. Not that we will serve Him, not that, that we will be a praise leader, not that I will be a preacher, not that I will be, but that we will seek Him. And perhaps feel their way toward Him and find Him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. <laughs> For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, For we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone an image formed by the art or the imagination of man. He did his homework, huh? So Paul, go in there. You know that he did his homework when it came to that statue. You know he did his homework when it came to the, to the philosophies of the Greeks at the time. You know he knew the Word of God. You know that he heard the Spirit at that time when he was speaking to them. We must be prepared to share our faith with others. We must prepare ourselves. Now, now I'm not saying wait until you're some going to like a four-year or eight-year college of biblical studies or seminary before you can go speak to somebody. That's not what I'm talking about. We talk about preparing our hearts, and we do the best that we can. Because they're a new believer. When I was a new believer, all I had was my own testimony. I didn't have a lot. I couldn't answer a lot of questions. Sometimes that's best. Because then you, you don't have the pressure of answering all those questions sometimes. Because I don't know. But I know this. And then you give them your testimony and why you believe and why God, why you gave your life to Christ. And it kind of simplifies it. Sometimes years later, everything else that we, we, all the other information we soak up, it makes us more accountable to answer more questions. And you're like, oh, sometimes. I love opportunity. I love to be challenged. As long as it glorifies God and not me. And, and God will stop me sometimes. He'll tell me, just don't answer that because that person doesn't want to know anyway. They're just challenging you and they want to win the argument. And you don't continue on just so that you can win the argument. Whatever it is I do, the intent of my heart needs to glorify God. To love that person and to glorify God. Heart, intent of heart is everything. And being led by the Holy Spirit. Because it has to be more than just intent of heart. Because like I said, good intention paves the road to what? <laughs> we can come with as good intentions as we want, but we have to be led by the Holy Spirit too. When we speak. Because otherwise, sometimes we can do more damage than good. But as a new believer, though, you can still speak. Just tell them what you know. What God has shown you. Tell them why you believe. But then later on, we must prepare ourselves. Let's look at uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. 
Study your word. Know the word of truth so that you can answer questions, so that you can walk in it. They can see you walk in it, and they know why you walk in it. Like I said, as a new believer, it's going to take time. But you need to take that time. And you need to grow. And if you've been walking with the Lord for 10 years and you still can't answer questions, you've got a problem. You need to be, because God will reveal his word to you. He will, if you study his word and meditate on his word, he will write his word on your heart. But we do have to take that time. And we have to be diligent about studying his word and staying constantly in prayer. Pray without ceasing. In all things, when that, 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 that scripture in Philippians, when it's talking about be anxious for nothing, we seem to stop there. This is all about avoiding anxiety. No. He says in all things after that, in everything through prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, bring your requests to God. In all things, not just the anxiety. And, and, and people take that out of context so much. It's not just about anxiety. When it says be anxious or nothing, it's saying don't be worrying about stuff. But, but, but take your request in everything. Take it to God through prayer, supplication, with an attitude of thanksgiving, thankfulness, expected, knowing that God is going to answer you. In all things, we, we must prepare ourselves prayfully we must prepare ourselves by, by meditating upon his word. And that's just not like, and, and just again, if, if we have new believers in here, just, it doesn't mean you go around reading the word all day. It means you meditate, you think on it throughout the day. Being prayerful or praying at all times doesn't mean you walk around praying all day long. It means you stay prayerful. A little prayer throughout the day. Any opportunity, you start praying. I, I do it all the time. I talk to the Lord in the truck. I talk. Of course, don't substitute that for, for taking the time to really get into your prayer closet and spend that intimate time with him. But you must stay prayerful all day. You must walk throughout the day thinking on him, thinking on his word, talking to him here and there. I'm always talking to him. Sometimes people think I'm talking to myself. Sometimes I am talking to myself. But... Most of the time, I'm talking to him. Because you can do that. You can talk to him anywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. That means don't go walking up to everybody telling them you need to, to find Jesus Christ or you're going to hell. The, 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 immediately that wall is going up and they're not going to hear anything you have to say after that. You have to do it with gentleness and respect. You have to uh, use that brain that God gave you to be creative on how you can approach them and how you can give them the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. And the thing is, is and, and, and the thing is, is, is we need to be prepared in every way. We must stay prayerful. We must be living the word of God. We must be a hearer of the word, a doer of the word. Stay prayerful and uh, uh, doing all of that stuff. And then be prepared at all times. We should be prepared at all times. To where, you know, each and every day when you run into somebody, you've already stayed, been in prayer every day and spent time in your word every day and, and, and been fellowshipping and, and learning and, and, and you're prepared to talk to them about Jesus. Amen? It's good news. They need to hear it. Let's read in verse 30 through 34. The times of ignorance, God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Don't forget that part. People need to understand that repent doesn't mean to ask for forgiveness. The word repent means to turn around, change your mind. 
it means that you are turning, you are, you are basically, you're putting your old ways behind, and you're gra- and you're following Christ in, in in everything that He is, everything He said, everything He's done, everything He is. That you were crucified with Christ. That it's no longer you who live, but Christ that lives in you. And the life that you now live in the flesh is in faith of the Son of God. Amen? Because he, whoa, excuse me. Because he has fixed the day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. But others said, we will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from the midst. But some men joined him and believed, among whom also was uh, Dionysus uh, the Areopagite and the woman named Damaris and others with them. We must trust God with the results. We must trust God with the results when we share our faith. We don't have the power to do anything. Now, some people won't. I've heard people who, who almost like to negate the, the power of prayer as well as uh, the need to, to witness and, and, and tell people about the gospel. They say, well, our God is sovereign. And whether we do it or not, God's will will be done. Well, ask yourself this question. What if his will is that he does it through you? And he has, he has chose to do his will through his people. To love on other people with love. Even when it talks about when he, when God pours into your bosom, when you give. And that when you receive and he pours into your bosom. He doesn't say that he pours it out of heaven. He says, from man I will pour into your bosom. He will use you. And it doesn't matter who you are. You don't need to be a pastor, a preacher, a leader, a deacon. You don't need. God will use you. God is God. Your, Your qualifications, your skills... Those don't mean nothing. He is the all-knowing, all-powerful God. He can speak. He speak. He spoke to Balaam the prophet through a donkey. He can speak to somebody through you. He could use your testimony to plant a seed on down the line that that person will remember, and that person ends up. When they hit their bottom, they give their life to Christ. And then that person plants another seed. And then it's a ripple effect. Boom, 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 boom. All because you shared your testimony with somebody. You have no idea how much impact you have on that person's life or on the people that come after that person. There was somebody that came before Billy Graham. And there was somebody that came before that person that came before Billy Graham who spoke and planted a seed in them. And then that person planted a seed in Billy Graham. Billy Graham planted a seed in someone else that went off. There are, it, that's the way it works. It's a ripple effect. You have no idea the impact you have on somebody when you just plant that seed. We are always worried about the results. We, 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 our fear and our pride always look at, well, what if that guy uh, uh, rejects me? What if that person uh, ignores me? What if that person yells at me? What if that person just says that what I'm saying is nonsense? And a lot of them did that to Paul right there. But did that discourage him from continuing on? No. He spread it all through Asia Minor and Greece and all. He started so many churches. And you don't think he was ever rejected? And the, or there was people that ever ignored him? I mean, they not only rejected and ignored him, they threw him in prison. They stoned him. You know, and, and it matters who you talk to. Some believe he was stoned to death. Some people don't believe, you know, and came back. Others don't. 
That's a topic for another day. But the point is, is that people will reject you. They will. If you speak to so many people, you, you know what it was that they say? Uh, the most successful people, most of them will tell you the same thing. Whether it's Bill Gates, whether it's uh, the, some of them, them rich tycoons. And they'll say, hey, I failed a thousand times and succeeded once. You will fail. And a lot of times, if you, if you never fail in life, I, I doubt very much that you even try. Yeah, you can't fail if you don't try, can you? And then you've already failed, haven't you? The thing is, is we need to understand our God is sovereign. And because he is sovereign, he can use, he can work his will through anyone. For the youngest child, there was one time I walked by the children's classroom over at Lincoln Street, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, stop. I forgot what I was dealing with. Uh, I had something going on, and I needed prayer. God told me to step in there and have the children lay hands on me. He says, the the, the childlike faith. They haven't had enough time to let the world put all that doubt in their heads. They usually believe whatever you tell them. And I walk in there, man, and, and I had some children lay hands on me. And I was healed. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember I was healed. God can use anyone to do his sovereign will because it's not about that person, not about their so-called skills and abilities and knowledge and wisdom. God's had to stop me before. He said, well, I need to impart my knowledge (laughs) on this person. God is like, your knowledge means squat. You need to love on this person. I just need you to shut up right now. Sometimes it's not do anything. Sometimes it's just listen. Because God knows exactly what that person needs at any given time. But one thing is he wants us all, not just me, not just the leaders in the church, not just the evangelists or the missionaries. We are all called to speak the gospel to people. Amen? And he will use you. There may be some of you today It's like, I just, uh, I don't have any, any skills or ability. I don't have a lot of knowledge of the word of God. Just, just give him what you do have. Give him a reason. This is a reason for the hope that you have. That's what, the, that's what that scripture says. Give them the reason for the hope that you have. Because you believe there's got to be a reason why you believe. This is why I believe. I, I can't tell you why this or this or this or this or that, but I can tell you why I believe and what God has done for me. Sometimes that's all they need to hear. Sometimes that's what they want to hear. I think, I believe, I don't remember if, if Kenny was here that day when the, when the guy came in here and he goes, why do you do what you do here in the outreach? Now, first thing I thought was I was going to give them the vision statement, you know, the mission statement that we had for the outreach. Well, we do this because we're trying to reach out, to, you know, to our community with the love of the love of it. And he's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not what I want. I want to know why, why do you do this? Why are you doing this? That can have a huge bearing and impact. God will work your story. I'm not saying that he depends on our experience. He doesn't depend on our experience, but he will use it. He will. And there will be opportunities where God will use your experience because people will want to know. Because because they need to know it's a personal thing. This is a personal relationship. So I, I need to know for you personally, why is it you believe and why do you do this? Amen? Because we have a personal God, a personal religion. This is just not a religion. This is not just a mission statement. But at the same time, we got to do our homework. That means we need to stay in prayer, nurse that personal relationship with him. 
We need to study His life-giving Word and let Him write His Word on our hearts as He transforms. Because remember, this whole process is our Father transforming us into the image of Jesus Christ. Because the more that we are like Jesus, the closer we get to, the more that we can communicate with Him, the more we have access to Him. Amen? And all of the resources of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians, and, the, and, the, and then I'll close. Paul made this, this statement to make it clear. It's not about me, it's not about you, but it's about God. In 1 Corinthians 3, verses 5 through 9, he says, What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed. As the Lord assigned to each, I planted. Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. For he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. Amen? So it is neither me nor John or any of them, but it is God. He has put us in a position to train, to, to encourage, and to think. And, 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 and some of us he put in a position to water, to help, but only God makes it grow within you. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. It takes the pressure off, don't it? Takes the pressure off. So just all you gotta do is go out there and speak. Just give it to him. Speak. Because God's in charge of the results. God is in charge of the results of it. It's not our job to convince them. It's not our job to convince to convict them. It's not our job to do any of that. It's just to give them the good news. And then God will make it grow. He'll do the convicting. He'll do the growing. He'll do Amen? I'm going to close in prayer, and then we're going to open up the altar for anyone that ha- any in need of prayer today. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for giving us breath this morning. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, because I, 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 I remember how many times when I should be dead, and I'm thankful every morning I get up even though I do a little moaning, a few cracks here and there. I'm thankful that I'm alive. I'm thankful for this day. I'm thankful for your salvation. And Lord God, we just ask because if we are truly thankful for your salvation, truly thankful for your mercy in which we deserve judgment, or, or thankful for your, your grace, which we do not deserve, then we'll give that same good news to as many people as possible. Lord God, encourage us to do so. Give us the courage, give us the strength, give us the knowledge to step out of faith and just give people the good news of you. We now have access to our Father through Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice. And, 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 that, and that veil is ripped between us and the Father. And now we have full access to our Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. Lord, it says, let us take advantage of that. To access you in every way we can access you. Lord, and to give you to as many as we can give you to. Lord, put that desire in us that you have. As we grow in you, as you transform us into the image of Jesus. Continue to build that desire in us just like you. And that is that no one should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, just, just give us the words to speak. Lord, Father, give us the opportunities. Let us see. Give us discernment to see the opportunities to speak to people, to show them the love of Jesus, and to give them the good news. We thank you, Lord God, that you choose to do your will through your people, that you love your children, and that we are fellow workers and servants for you, Lord God. We thank you. But we're not just servants. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we just thank, I just also thank you today that you continue to bless everyone here, this body. I ask you that you love on them. Just meet each one of them where their need is. Continue to remind each one of them to love each other, Lord God. And then remind each one of them to love people out there. And the best way we can love the people out there is to bring them the good news. We thank you, Lord God. And we praise you and we give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and praise you. Amen. Amen.